Hey guys, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. We really appreciate the recent subscriptions. Please keep subscribing. What we're gonna talk about today is I'm gonna let you on the inside of my world as a pulmonologist, as a physician who takes care of people with lung problems. Occasionally, I'm gonna see something that's abnormal in the lung and I've gotta make a decision if I need to take off my stethoscope and go inside that person's lung. Come take a look. So what we're gonna to discuss today is we're gonna talk about my top three reasons as to why I perform navigational bronchoscopy. Now, you have to know what a navigational bronchoscopy is. We've discussed what a basic bronchoscopy is in which you take a long tube that has a video camera at the end and you put it through the mouth, into the trachea, and into someone's lung. And there you're looking for abnormalities. What a navigational bronchoscopy is after you get that CAT scan and you understand where the nodules are located within the lung, you now have a tip tracking system that can guide you to a specific nodule or to a specific area that you're interested in biopsying. So it's Tuesday. And as you guys are sitting there watching the video premiere of a YouTube episode that I published today, I have probably just finished a navigational bronchoscopy and performing a biopsy on a patient's lung. And so what we're going to go through first and foremost is when I'm sitting in my office and I have a patient and their family member right next to me and I'm scrolling through a CAT scan, what I'm looking for is that abnormal lung nodule or lung mass or abnormal lung tissue and interstitial lung disease. I can biopsy that patient. And in fact, in my lab, I have a pathologist right next to me and I can immediately look under the microscope and see the abnormal cells that may represent either a cancerous type of situation or an auto-inflammatory type of situation. And so I get my answer right then and there. So my top reason for performing a navigational lung biopsy is to better serve my patient. Reason number two as to why I use Varen Medical Technologies navigational bronchoscopy system is because I know what I'm looking for. So when I have a patient and a family member at my bedside in my office, I have to give them a differential diagnosis of what takes place and what can actually go on in their lung. Whether this is cancer, whether this is infection, whether this is autoimmune, I know what I'm looking for. But most of the time, when you're consulting someone else, they're going to have their own thoughts and they may be just a proceduralist. They may just do the procedure and that's it. And that's okay, but for me and for my patients, I know what I'm looking for. That's why I use Varian Medical Technologies equipment to perform my navigational lung biopsies. My third reason for performing navigational lung biopsies is because I have to deal with the complications anyway. Whenever you're looking at someone's lung, as you're scrolling through a CAT scan, you have abnormal lung parenchyma. And not only do you have the lung cells, but you also have blood vessels and blood vessel cells within those lung parenchyma. And when you biopsy that, those blood vessels can bleed. What can happen sometimes is you can develop a significant amount of bleeding that takes place in what's called the pleural space, which is the space between your lung and your chest wall. We call that a hemothorax. So when a hemothorax takes place, the blood collects and you gotta put a tube in. The person that's normally putting that tube in is me anyways. That's one. Two, you can also bleed inside the airway. Again, that's also my area of expertise as a pulmonary and critical care physician. I can go in with the bronchoscope, look inside, and maybe squirt some topical medication to get the bleeding to calm down. The third complication that can take place is what's called a pneumothorax. Occasionally, patients will have significant amounts of dead lung on their CAT scan. Dead lung is also called emphysema. If you poke a hole in that dead lung, you can actually get a rush of air into that pleural space and the lung will collapse. If it collapse, you gotta put a tube in and suck that air out. The person who does that procedure is also me. So again, reason number three for why I do navigational bronchoscopies with biopsies is because I have to take care of the complications anyway, so I might as well know about the complications sooner. So it's Tuesday. It's the day that you guys are watching this video and it's also the day that I'm in my endoscopy suite performing this procedure. Patient gets admitted 
to the outpatient endoscopy suite. They go immediately for a CT scan. Once they go for that CT scan, my Varen medical technology machine and my CT scanner communicate with one another. Once that takes place, I am able to look at the CT scan while I am on my Varen medical technology laptop or machine. Now, getting the CT scan the day of gives me the most up-to-date position of the pulmonary nodule or mass or abnormal lung tissue. As I mark one of the nodules, what I'm actually doing is allowing my tip tracking system to understand the location of the pulmonary mass and the pulmonary nodule that I'm going to biopsy. Once I mark this pulmonary nodule and I have planned on the direction or route I'm going to take to perform this procedure, it's go time. So what you can see here is I have the CAT scan, I have my virtual screen here, and I'm endobronchial right now with the bronchoscope. As I'm traveling down the trachea, you can see I'm going off to the left of the screen here, and I'm trying to get into this purple mass. And you can see the purple mass here, and it's purple on my virtual screen to let me know that the mass is close. And my approach is going right through the trachea, through the left main stem here, trying to approach this mass to be able to biopsy it with my forceps. The mass is extremely apical, so I've had to take this position where I'm really twisting my hands and twisting my left hand to get the bronchoscope way up to that point, and I'm getting up there, and you can see that I'm approaching the mass right here, and this is one of the favorite parts of my job, is being able to look at this mass on image, biopsy it, and get a diagnosis right here, right now, and inform the patient what we're going to do next. This is a tip tracking forcep. It's a very good tool. It's actually the first tool that I use when I am performing this procedure. Another one of my favorite tools is what's called the triple needle brush. I love this instrument. It also has a tip tracking sensor. You can see that there's three needles and three brushes that get inside the lesion and you're able to collect an adequate amount of sample so that you can put it on a slide and look at the sample under a microscope, giving you a diagnosis. Once you biopsy the lesion, you want to have your pathologist next to you so that you can see if you have enough tissue and if you can make a diagnosis. It's not a rule, but it's definitely beneficial. Now, here's something that I love the most about this machine and about Varen in general. This is a navigational system. I can go through the bronchioles, I can go through those airways, and I can get guided to the lesion. Easy, we can do that. It's a joystick, guide ourselves there. However, what if there's not an airway that guides you to the lesion? What if you can't get there from the inside? What are you gonna do then? If you have other technologies, you might not have any other option, but with this technology, you do have another option, and that is called a percutaneous transthoracic biopsy. In other words, I'm gonna stick a needle through the skin, over a rib, into a lesion. On this CAT scan, as you can see, you've got a left upper lobe lung lesion. Now, on the needle, there's also a tip tracking instrument right at the tip of the needle. The vascular bundle runs inferior to the rib, so you wanna go over the top of the superior aspect of a rib. Once you get into the lung, you're able to guide yourself to the lesion. Let's take a look. So here's my tip tracking instrument. So when I'm looking at the screen now, I know that I need to go superior. As I'm superior, I'm traveling right over the rib and I wanna get my trajectory correct. And again, this is a video game. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the nodule on all the planes that this is gonna guide me directly to the lesion. Now, you can use what's called a fiducial marker, where either transthoracically, I'll go over the rib into the lesion, or endobronchially into the lesion, I can leave markers, so that way the surgeon knows where the lesion is. I can also inject dye in those areas and will allow surgeons to be super successful. You can also leave different kind of tools in those areas as well, whether it's a wire or something of that sort. 
but there are so many different things that you can do with this tip tracking system and this navigational technology that allow the patient to have the best care possible. And that's the most important thing. So thanks for joining today. And again, what we discussed today was navigational bronchoscopy and my top three reasons for performing it. My first reason for performing this procedure was because I want to better serve my own patients. That's obvious. When I look a patient in the eye and I say a procedure needs to be done, I want to be the one that's doing the procedure most of the time, especially as a pulmonologist. Two, I know what I'm looking for. When I'm looking at your CAT scan and I see a nodule or abnormal lung tissue, the differential diagnosis was created and is in my head. So I know what I'm looking for. And when I have the pathologist next to me after I biopsy, I can say, yep, that's what I was thinking or no, I'm completely wrong. We need to do this. And the third reason that I love this procedure is because I have to deal with the complications anyway. If somebody has a hemothorax or a pneumothorax or is bleeding in the airway, the pulmonary critical care doctor gets called. That's me. So I can deal with those complications appropriately. And most importantly, I'll be able to deal with the complication right away. Thanks for joining Medicine Deconstructed. I really appreciate you guys being here. I wanted to let you guys into my world and let you know what I do on Tuesdays as you're watching new videos. Please subscribe to the channel, go ahead and click that notification button and you'll be notified every Tuesday when a video is released. But right now, I'm gonna put my stethoscope back on and I'm gonna head to the hospital because I gotta work tonight. Take care.